This is Michael Smith of MedPage Today. I'm in Miami Beach at the annual meeting of the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology, uh, and I'm speaking to Anne-Marie Salapatek, uh, who is of Sotero Research in Mississauga, Ontario, just outside Toronto. She's reporting on a novel way of testing uh, patients with non-allergic rhinitis to see what actually triggers their 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 condition. Um, and Dr. Uh, Dr. Salapatek, first of all, let's talk a little bit about what is non-allergic rhinitis and what different what's different about that from the rhinitis we all know and love. Sure. Uh, thank you, Michael. Um, <clears throat> um, Non-allergic rhinitis is a phenomenon that is more recently being recognized, uh, a disease phenomenon more recently recognized in which the triggers for rhinitis or inflammation in the nose is not triggered by allergy, uh, but rather, or allergens, but rather by other triggers, such as environmental triggers of uh, pollutants, such as ozone, uh, known to also be triggered by weather change, the so-called skier's nose that uh, doctors will comment on to patients when they have the runny nose in cold conditions, moving from warm environments of the indoor to the outdoor environment uh, in places where uh, there is cold weather conditions. Dr. Salapatek, can you describe the setup uh, in your lab? Sure. Um, we've developed a clinical model to study this uh, disease phenomenon in which we actually have a controlled setting. So patients with non-allergic rhinitis actually sit in a facility, in a room, in which they are exposed to these triggers in a very controlled and safe manner. And so we have we simulate weather changes by shifting temperature from cold to warm and look at the nasal symptoms that uh, that they uh, develop in the chamber. This is as after, of course, they have been screened appropriately to show that they don't have the typical allergic symptoms or at least allergic basis for their symptoms. We also can provide patients with typical irritants, a uh, big problem these days um, in the in indoor environment. Patients are commenting on perfume use and fragrance. We can apply this in a controlled uh, fashion. Uh, also looking at components of pollution such as ozone uh, and other irritants uh, in this manner. You're reporting on several patients here. Uh, what sort of things are you finding uh, when you study these patients? Uh, well, uh, very specifically, we've been able to take this data set and, and look at these patients and really tease out their responses to these chambers as never before. Uh, typically, these types of studies in these patients were run in the environment where we don't control uh, these kind of triggers. You report, for instance, that 51% of patients respond to weather changes and 37% respond to ozone, but they're not necessarily the same patients. Are you now able to tease out differences in non-allergic rhinitis? So we have the ability now to actually phenotype these patients. We can find out who responds to what set of uh, environmental triggers, and we could tailor their therapies uh, in that way. As well, of course, importantly, use this model to um, test potential putative new uh, anti-non-allergic rhinitis therapeutics, which uh, we hope to do so. In Miami Beach, I'm Michael Smith, MedPage Today.